Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Monday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met. It is Monday, January the 6th, and I promised that today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Mets 40-man roster as it's currently constructed. I'm going to go through all 40 guys who are right now on the roster with one little asterisk being what's the status, what's the real status of Yoana Cespedes. So I'll get into that uh, a little bit on today's show, but not a lot of surprises here. I'm going to go through top to bottom and um, point out a couple of potential areas of risk with this 40-man roster. So the Mets 40-man roster as it's currently constructed is pretty well packed. Um, I'm going to go over it today on, on the show. Let's start in the bullpen because the bullpen is, um, is pretty well set. Um, uh, we'll go backwards to forwards. We'll go Edwin Diaz as the closer, allegedly at this point. Dylan Betances. Uh, there's eight guys in the bullpen. So Diaz, Betances, Familia, um, Lugo, Brock, Gazelman, uh, Wilson, and probably Michael Waka as the eighth man, although it's possible that it could end up being Steven Matz, but we'll see there. So that's the bullpen. Um, one of the one of the potential issues with the 40-man here is that none of these guys have any options. Um, I think other than Robert Gazelman, uh, none of the other bullpen arms <clears throat> have any kind of options. So if the Mets get in a pinch where they need to call up a, a spot starter, they're either going to have to demote a bench guy, um, uh, which will probably end up happening, like a spot start usually ends up happening after like a, a rain out or a double header, or whatever, um, and the Mets need to pull up somebody uh, from AAA, they really don't have much flexibility as far as the roster goes there. They could, they could demote Gazelman, um, but that's about it. And if you end up doing like a Guillaume demotion, uh, then your then your bench is short. So um, that's one of the potential issues with this bullpen, which I have to say I do agree with Brody Van Wagenen's assessment, where he sort of says this has the potential to be one of the best bullpens in all of baseball. He's not wrong, um, but it, he's not right either. <laughs> There's a lot that uh, a lot that has to go right for that to be the case, but we'll see. Uh, so that's the bullpen. That's the uh, eight guys in the bullpen. The starting rotation also pretty well set in stone. DeGrom, of course, is the anchor of the staff, uh, followed by Syndergaard and Stroman, uh, Steven Matz, and then Rick Porcello, potentially Michael Waka. Again, Matz might wind up in the bullpen. Um, I guess potentially uh, Porcello could as well, but we'll see there. Uh, so the the, ro the uh, rotation is pretty locked down. You know, the one concern I have about the rotation is that last year they were so unbelievably healthy. I'm just nervous that something bad's going to happen this year just because they were so healthy last year. Like, nobody got hurt in the rotation. So I hope that can continue into 2020. Um, now we get into the starting lineup to the offensive players. And we'll go with the starters first. Uh, pretty Again, pretty well locked down um, with one exception. And the starters will be behind the plate, Wilson Ramos, uh, going around the diamond, Pete Alonso, Robinson Cano, Ahmed Rosario, uh, Jeff McNeil at third, and the outfield left to right, it'll be, uh, sorry, let's go right to left, Conforto, Nimmo, and then left field is sort of that no man's land where depending on the status of Yoenis Cespedes as the season starts, J.D. Davis will either be in left field or on the bench as the first guy off the bench. Um, Cespedes being in the lineup, of course, would be great, uh, but, you know, who knows if that's really going to happen. Um, th there are ramifications beyond that because I mentioned a moment ago Luis Guillorme as a potential um, shuttle guy to go down to AAA if the Mets need to make room for something. Well, if uh, Cespedes is on the opening day roster, the bench is uh, no longer going to have, more than likely, no longer going to have Guillorme on it. So the bench will be Marisnik, <coughs> excuse me, Jed Lowry, uh, J.D. Davis potentially, um, T Tomas Nito, and Dom Smith as it's currently constructed. The, uh, the problem with that, again, is that who of those guys has the options? I think Dom might, but are you going to be demoting Dom? I don't know. I, I don't know. And this is the conundrum that the team faces right now with the roster as it's currently constructed. I'm not advocating that the Mets go out and make any big moves to, uh, to address any of this, um, although I do still believe that if they're able to find a suitor for Jed Lowry, they will move Jed Lowry, even if it means they have to eat some of that money as a result, because he's just such a poor fit um, on this team. And frankly, Luis Guillorme can do everything that he can do in the field as far as positional flexibility. Um, not the accomplished hitter that Lowry is, of course, but... You know, for the for the spot that he's taking up on the roster, it's it's a tough one. 
Um, the other thing I'll bring up here is the the whole, and I st- sort of talked about this last week a little bit, um, square peg, round hole, round peg, square hole debate um, with, uh, with the bench particularly, <clears throat> where, you know, Lowry is really the only true backup middle infielder who's sort of guaranteed a spot on the bench. Um, yes, it's, it's possible that Giorme could play all the positions as well, as I just said. Um, but, you know, this is where having Dom Smith and J.D. Davis, basically the same kind of player, offense first kind of player, and that's really not fair to Dom because he's he's proven to be a good first baseman. But, of course, there's no room for him at first base with the Mets unless, God forbid, something terrible happens to Pete Alonso. Um, so, you know, Dom and Davis both sort of fall into this trap of um, they're nice pieces, but they don't really fit the holes on the board right now for the Mets. And what does that mean going forward? You know, I said if, if the Mets can find a suitor for uh, Jed Lowry, I think they'll move him. Um, as much as I don't want to see the Mets trade trade away Dom Smith, I think that's a legit possibility because they have to get a little bit more flexible with the roster and with who can play what positions. And uh, and right now it's just there's there's too many guys who don't really fit anywhere on the field. Um, I love Dom. I've said it a million times. I think he's great. I, I want him to stay, but uh, he you know he just doesn't really fit on the roster. So if there's a casualty, I suspect it's going to be Dom. And it's going to suck because I think he'll do well someplace else. Um, but we'll, we'll see. You know, if the season were to start right now, this is the, the roster the Mets would be bringing out there. And even absent Cespedes, this is a really decent lineup. It really is. It's a decent lineup. It's a, it has a potential to be a really good bullpen. Um, and when Cespedes can get, get on the field, if he can get on the field and if he's healthy, this lineup can get super scary really fast. I mean, you're looking at a lineup that's going to have Robbins Cano batting like seventh. Um, that's how potentially good this lineup could be. I'm going to talk more about the lineup tomorrow uh, as I sort of delve deeper into the 40-man and talk about sort of what I think the ideal lineup construction should be with this team in 2020. I'll do that on uh, on tomorrow's show. But until then... Um, let me know what your thoughts are on the 40 man as it currently stands. Um, are, are we happy with it? Should we make some changes to it? Uh, what would you do if you could make changes to it? Let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. If you're not following me there, you should do so. Uh, thank you for watching today. I appreciate it. And as always, let's go Mets.